I should have had your other cookbook to show. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, with my co-host today, Bailey. And this is where I introduce you to amazing people who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today's guests have been on the sh show before. They've actually been on the Truth About Weight Loss Summit. Their names are Jeffrey and Jill Talton, and you probably know them from the amazing YouTube channel called the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Nobody makes recipes as delicious, easy, as accessible, as user friendly is Jill and they have a wonderful cookbook out and it's fantastic and they're doing another one and we're going to tell you today here how you can get it and support them in making this book beautiful and everything about that so please welcome them to the show congratulations on writing another book was it as easy or as hard as the first oh wow that's a really good question <laughs> uh, it's kind of a mixed bag you know because we we I think we knew what to expect because we already did our first book, but we did our first book with a publisher. And this time we decided to self-publish. So yeah, it's a it kind of a different ball game. It's a lot, yeah. it's a lot, it's a lot more work this way, uh, for sure. Self, so we're self-publishing. So we're, we're working with a hybrid publisher. So we still have a publisher, but we, we kind of do all the upfront work ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. And that it has been more work, but it's, it's the work that we wanted to do. Right. Because we really wanted to have a hand in, in everything from like the paper stock to the type of binding and things when you're a first time author you just you can't choose you, you yeah. do soft cover and <laughs> yeah we couldn't even do a hard cover with that yeah. first book so that is so interesting because you know I, I go back and forth because there's pros and cons to self-publishing and being with a publisher I never yeah. heard of a hybrid publisher is that kind of like a hybrid car for books or oh, I mean like what yeah. does that mean <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're working with the the, the company that we settled on is mascot books um, and the, the woman that we're working with there, Jess, she's like their, their um, head of acquisitions like for, for projects because they, they're one, there's hybrid publishers who will publish anything. You just show up and give them your manuscript and they'll publish it. And then there's hybrid publishers where you still submit just like you would with a publisher and they only publish certain things. And that's how Mascot is. So once we, we kind of talked about the project, we showed them our first book. And from day one, they have just been phenomenal, yeah. like such on, on point, like answering all our questions and to do something like we're doing where we're self-publishing, but we're also doing a Kickstarter. You have to answer a million yeah, questions. There's so many questions. There's so much uh, logistics and planning and all this stuff involved to do this. And they've been absolutely stellar for the whole process. Um, and then we had a wonderful, uh, uh, Carrie Krause was one of the viewers from the show. Uh, she came forward to edit the book uh, she's a, a freelance editor and she's whole food plant-based. So it was like having an amazing editor who understands yeah. everything we're saying. Yeah. And, she, and went was, through, she went through all the recipes. She went through everything. She read she was, our first book and made sure that everything in the second book cohesive, you know, it was, it was the same and the same language yeah. and the same look and way more than we would have ever dreamed that yeah. she could do. <laughs> really yeah, I want to meet her. Is, is she for, is she available for hire? Because I mean, yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. That would be That's amazing. I told her, we're like, we're going to plug, plug your work. Cause she, I think she said she was an accountant, uh, but she'd always wanted to be an editor and like a writer and stuff. And she's home, works from home now or something like that. And so she wants to do this and she's edited a bunch of stuff. She's got a business, like it's really well set up and the experience of working with her, like just sharing a Google doc and, and just, she just plowed through that. It was so clear. Yeah, we weren't expecting So we're like accepting changes and we're talking about <laughs> stuff and she's making really good suggestions because she knows the subject matter. Um, so I told her, yeah, anybody with any whole food plant-based stuff for sure, because she, yeah. she knows the subject so well and having an editor get that. Yeah, then she, she knows the exact right answers or questions to ask. Yeah. You know, if yeah. there was, there was a few things that little mistakes I made here and there in the, you know, in the writing of the recipe. And she said, you know, do, would you want it like this? Maybe you should have it more like this than this. And Great, like her intuitiveness yeah. that that should have been changed just really blew me away. She, I didn't even catch that. She's you know, the editor. She's taught. making the recipes. Yeah. She's like, hey, I made this last night. And uh, I noticed there was something in the instructions. And it's like, wait, you made the recipe? <laughs> yeah, <what? laughs> I thought you were just editing the book. So that's yeah, been wonderful. What a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, so, so the process, you know, the work and stuff, it has been more work. But we really enjoy doing this and, and being feeling like the end product is really something that, that we'll have created. 
everything right. about it, like all the choices that go into a book we get to make and uh, this way. We were also able to involve the community, our membership community. Um, yeah, we yeah, gave them absolutely. options and we even involved them in making some of the decisions on like the color of the, of the um, cover, the binding, the, the type of book, yeah. you know, like um, the hardcover, but it's a flat, uh, what do you lay, call it? Lay flat. Lay flat yeah. binding. Uh, yeah, that is, that that is really, I love, love I like the idea of a lay flat binding. I remember when Kathy Fisher, who also did a Kickstarter for her very successful cookbook, uh, Straight Up Food, that was really important to her. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, want, we wanted that for sure. But the only thing we knew that could do that lay flat binding was like the spiral bound. And we really didn't want to do a spiral bound. I don't, they just don't look like an, a nice special cookbook to me, but typically those hardcover cookbooks are really stiff and they don't open all the way. So finding this one with this uh, publisher was such a, a yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. let, me, let me read some of the nice comments. Lisa says, I love your first cookbook and I love your cooking channel. Uh, Diana says, I've been trying their recipes. Amy says, Jill's recipes, I love them. I can't wait for her new cookbook. And uh, I'm stoked about this new cookbook, says Leanna, on the edge of my seat for the day it's released. We have any idea what day that is? Well, the, no. yeah, this, so self-publishing, doing a Kickstarter, what we're doing is really the opposite process. So typically we would go through the publisher, they would print all the books, and then we would make an announcement that it's for sale. We're kind of having to do that in reverse because printing books is so expensive. So the Kickstarter is how we raise funds. When you pledge on the Kickstarter today, those funds are used to print the book. And the publisher is telling us about six months from the end of the Kickstarter, par partly because we have everything ready to go. And the Kickstarter is one month. Yeah, the Kickstarter so. lasts for 30 days. So you essentially are buying the book up front and we're asking folks to have enough faith in, in us you know, to do something like that. But that allows for folks of our scale to create something really nice instead right. of just turning it over to a publisher, which is what we, you know, we had a good experience our, with our first book, but there was just a lot of things we wanted to do that you just cannot do. And this yeah. way we can do it. So we have to do it in reverse. <laughs> yeah. right. Publisher, sorry to see you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're, we're still going to do something with them, but the, yeah, to do these on. special hardcover things, we want to do them ourselves. So I think this is how we're going to do our cookbooks going forward. And then maybe do something later, you know, soft cover or some other other thing uh, down right. the road. Well, the other thing is, is if you want to be a New York Times bestseller, you got to be with a publisher. So would the hybrid publisher count for that? I think oh, the, that's a good question. I think Mascot mm -hmm. does because they're actually a publisher. Like they, they're considered like a real publisher. Um, but we, in looking into that, I, I think that that kind of accolade is great, but it's really not. We don't really care about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know what the we just want that, people but, to be happy and to get. You yeah, know, we just want to make something awesome for our audience. Right. The the outside of that, like folks, you know, something like the New York Times, that would be great because people would learn about whole food plant based. But our intention is just to make something. Well, awesome that's that's <laughs> not you know that's not our our. I mean, I would say Jeff could be a writer for sure, but <laughs> yeah, being a writer vacation. is not really our you know goal in in our life. So yeah. Well, that would be wonderful be to be great. on the New York, New York Times. Best. If yeah, you're watching sure. This. <laughs> that would be great. That's really great. <laughs> That's but, no, the reason I ask is because I'm it's something I'm exploring and with selling the books in it. I know I don't know much about this, but I know like to to do that, you gotta sell a certain amount of books in a certain amount of time. So time. I don't I don't know how this works, but it, it a lot of people are saying they like Susanna, they love the lay flat binding. She really enjoys your recipe. And uh, Janet says, this is perfect. I've been talking to so many people on a plant-based diet. And I don't know what you mean by Elizabeth. I'm looking for one tool. Do I have her link? I'm posting the link so you guys can get that book right now. There's different levels. And if you if you go different levels, you get a lot of, tell about the bonus stuff people get if they do just a slight yeah. little bit more. So we've got, there's four, basically four tiers. The, the digital only is really just for folks who want, you know, the digital version of the book and don't want a physical book. Um, and then we have just the book itself. So it's just the hardcover edition. And then we've got the hardcover bundle, which is the hardcover book and then all of the digital stuff. So we're doing like meal plans. We're gonna do a copy of our first book that all is PDFs. So you get our first book, our second book, um, and then also a meal plan that's built around each book. So if you have the cookbook, it's like, here's a meal plan you can work with. 
Um, and then the, the last tier is, is just fun. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's more expensive, but you can actually have your picture in your, like a brief summary of your plant-based success story right. in the book. Which So that, that would be so cool. Cause we, we love hearing those stories. Yeah, and when people sharing. write us, we're like, more people need to hear these because it's so relatable and so inspiring. <laughs> Can I ask a question? I, I want to give you guys the, guys the highest level because I love you, but I, I just think it would be weird if my picture was in your book. Could, <laughs> could it be Bailey? Could it be Bailey's picture? Oh, that's so funny. Is, is your dog vegan? She is now, but I can't promise. Every, I mean, you know, but, but yes, right now she is. We have her on a new vegan food. Oh, that'd be great because so. you, could, you could put a little something in there, you know, because it's going to take a while for the, the cookbook to, to happen and to be produced. Uh, so see how your dog does oh, after a little while on vegan dogs. Cause I would do that level our, our right now. Is, if, I, if I could have Bailey's picture instead of me, I would do it this second. I think yeah, be, sure. The only thing I mean, we put, the restrictions we put was like, just no political stuff, no religious stuff. It's like, you know, it's not a place for people to. Oh no, she coffee. would just say how much she loves carrots and sweet potatoes. Yeah, oh, go. that's fantastic. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm doing it. Guys, I'm <laughs> donating it to 110. You guys can donate it to 20 oh, to 35. No. Bailey, we're going to be <laughs> Oh, well, you know, that's I'll tell you, funny. our we we have a dog who's a uh, river who's uh, f- about five, five and a half years, years old, old. Yeah. Uh, and we raised her on V dog. We we adopted her as a rescue dog. I don't know what she ate until we we got her, but she has been incredibly healthy. Um, and we're not, you know, we're not affiliated with V dog, but uh, I feel like V dog has allowed us to have our dog be plant based and be healthy, right? And we don't have to participate then in like buying dog food that's made out of you know, who knows what Yeah. animal parts and yeah, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a documentary all about, uh, what was dog fo- the dog fooled. Dog, yeah, fooled. dog fooled. Yeah. It's fantastic. But it tells you all of these crazy things that end up in the dog food that you don't know about. Yeah. So, she, you, you know, know, she's and, been, and that incredibly... dogs end up having all of the same problems that humans do. They end up with yeah. diabetes, they're, you know, they're Cancer, tumors, tumors and all this kinds of stuff. And it's because we're feeding them this similar stuff. Yeah, yeah you know that we shouldn't be eating we get it's funny we did one episode on our dog and we made some <laughs> vegan dog treats and it was a mix it was a lot of angry people yeah. <laughs> felt like we were yeah. tormenting our dog and then there were other people who get you know why we're doing what we're doing yeah. but, uh, and like well luckily dogs can be either they can be yeah, yeah as long as the food is made right they can they right can and she's food. she's she runs we walk her at least three miles every day and she's ready to go again oh yeah right when healthy. we get home and just runs and plays and oh, never amazing. she never had any any health problems at, ever never had to take her we took her to the vet because she swallowed a toothpick <laughs> and we were worried you know but other than that she's never had a single issue so mm-hmm. she's really been a testament just seeing what it does right. you know <laughs> Was she one of your recipe testers <laughs> yeah. oh yeah <laughs> she gets her fair share for yeah, sure. she does. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there is a new company that's doing fresh delivered wet vegan dog food. And I'm testing it because I want to have oh. the CEO on the show because I love V Dog and I the, the, the company. I love Linda Middlesworth, but Bailey just doesn't like dry food. I can't, and the, oh, only, yeah. get her to, the only way I could get her to eat it is if I put an so, animal product on it in the smallest amount. So now we've got this new wet food. So, oh, so far fantastic. she's loving it. So that, that's why I said, she vegan? Yeah, she, this week she is, cause that's all she's getting. Yeah, so she's getting and that's good for some of the older dogs. I know cause their, their teeth start to go yeah. bad. They can't crunch the hard, the kibble. So oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yep. Well, Kelly says I'm part of Jill's community and bought the new book on Kickstarter. I love Jill's recipe. And uh, let's see. I, 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 Sandy said I just pledged, ordered, looking forward to receiving the book. Come on, everybody on here, do it. If everybody, gosh, if everybody just watching today would do it right now, you could get quite a bit way towards your goal. Yay! Um, you know, to your question about the New York Times stuff, the interesting thing about a Kickstarter and self-publishing is whatever your Kickstarter reaches those books will count as a sale on the same day because your, your Kickstarter, once it ends, it'll fund. And when you pay your publisher, when those books are done, uh, technically that's when they sell. So you would sell however many thousands of whatever you do in one day. In one day. So yeah. it, it might actually you know, work for that. I don't know how you get on the list for the New York Times. You know, I, I know, I just know it has something to do with 
what happens at the beginning. And I really don't know. We got we should have Robert Cheek on because he did it. And I, I'm sure there's they do things to, to do that. So one of the live viewers says, I'm surprised to see it takes 70,000 to publish a cookbook. Is it really possible to profit from cookbook sale? It actually takes a lot more than that. Yeah. So yeah. Like, no, I know how much I had to pay because I have I, my publishers. I want to say pseudo. It's not a pseudo publisher. And I don't Maybe he's a hybrid. I don't know I what I did it. for my last book, but I will say that we'll, we'll answer that question and then I'll tell you about my publishing experience. <laughs> well, the the first cookbook that we did, I think we ended up getting we we sold so far we've sold twelve thousand. Is that right? Uh, like fourteen or fourteen thousand. But we I think we make like a dollar a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hey, dollar cookbooks, cookbooks, and that's good. You know, some people make. Would well, JP, who was on the show yesterday, makes? He's with the largest metaphysical publishing. He makes forty cents a book. Oh, yeah. that's terrible. And yeah, cookbooks in particular, because you're at least our books, we're printing all in color. And in the printing world, when you go from black and white to color, that's a huge difference in price. Just that. So if you're going to do like ours, where we do yeah. a picture, and, and everything every is in color for every recipe. If you have a hundred recipes, that means you've got 200 pages, you know, just to, for the recipes and then any additional pages. And then you add hardcover and like a cloth binding and the cost of all of that stuff for a cookbook is very different than like a book on business uh, development or where it's just text on a page and you can do black and white and you can do a smaller format. You know, we're doing these big nine by nine uh, books and yeah, yeah then it it's, is then it's insanely the, expensive. The editing then it's the the uh, distribution all you know, the design there's, work the there's layouts, so many the, hands in the pot that by the time it's done yeah the the people that wrote the book the the originators <laughs> actually do that get very little <laughs> which is a shame I, i'm not sure how that has happened that way over you know the lifetime of publishing books but and our our <laughs> books it's interesting because you know we give our recipes away so to in, in our business everything we're doing is online and we're making the books because our audience asked for them. You know, we even we do like PDFs where you can print them. And people are like, hey, I'd really love to have a book in my hands, like on the counter. And um, so that it's really us trying to, to fulfill something that people are asking for uh, and, and make something nice. Because we figure if we're going right. to go all this trouble yeah, to do it in paperback, really nice, right? we don't really want to do that. We want to make something that you want to keep. And Well, and we're both, you know. we're both artists. So, you know, when we, when we did our first cookbook, we had control of so little. Yeah, we couldn't make very many decisions, and especially with how it looked. And you know, we made some of those choices, but you know, we had to work within these confines. And now it was like, wow, what do we want to do? It's, it's kind us. of yeah. sky's the limit, you know, except for the cost. Yeah. <laughs> we have to keep it moderate, you know. But and having the community votes so has really been fun because we get to actually really hear. Because we'll, you know, we'll come to a decision, the right, two of us, right. like on the font. <laughs> and we both like the different font. So we're like, well, let's just have a community vote and see what people want. And it was very oh, clear. Mine. <laughs> yeah, it was like, Jill was totally right. And I was completely wrong. So <laughs> she suggested we have community votes on all kinds of stuff in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> let's see what they say about this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think people realize and, uh, that, I mean, unless you're Colin Campbell selling a million copies of the China study, how little uh, an author makes. Yeah, right. the authors make yeah, of, of what you anything. what's even crazier people have written us and said hey is this going to be on Amazon. And when right. we answer what I want to say is why it's not on Amazon, you know Amazon can take up to 55% of the retail price of the book. And when you're when you're the author, you you're maybe getting like 13% of the wholesale price. So you have a, a retailer taking half of the retail price of the book. There's nothing left. Yeah, there's nothing left. Everyone is like, you know, picking at the scraps after that. So and we you, don't want our book on and Amazon, you know, honestly, because it's you, worse for us. You know? On Amazon, you, I, I think you probably would sell or, or, you know, have a broader audience, right? There's more availability to everyone, you know, for, for someone that's just shopping for a plant-based book you know, they wouldn't know about our Kickstarter, yeah, they wouldn't know but, about our you know, we had to balance that out and say, you know, what, what is the more important thing for us? Because we're not, we're not making a cookbook for us to make a whole bunch of money. You know, that's it not the, the goal way to of go. the cookbook. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're like, no, this is really for our community and people that have, that have 
asked for it. And it just seems the, like the most natural next step for us to do because we had already finished our first cookbook yeah. and we have enough recipes to do a second cookbook. It just seemed like, okay, it, it's time. <laughs> And something on our cookbooks I think is that I think is really cool and, and our audience has responded to our cookbooks I think are completely unique in the cookbook world because every recipe has a video there's a QR code on the page you scan it with a smartphone and it opens up to a video of Jill making the recipe and as far as we know like no one has ever done that before for an entire book so this is our second book and there's 101 recipes and they all have videos so if you're trying to make something and you're stuck you just take out your phone and scan right. the thing, and now you're watching a video of Jill making that that recipe. Yeah, so that is cool. Like People are commenting, like Jerry says, "I'm all in. Love your earlier book, especially the option to scan and watch the recipe video." Oh, cool! Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. It's funny when we did that in the first book. The publisher, they were great. Yeah, yeah. They supported us, but they're like, "I don't know, they really man." Larry of it. They're like nobody does this. We don't. We're not sure how to do this. And but I had done some of this before in my previous work, so I, I understood how it worked, but. They were, they were, you know, reluctant. It's yeah, like, like, I don't, are people going to want this? And as soon as we launched the book, we started hearing from people like, wow, it's amazing. I just scanned this thing and, and I'm watching a video if I'm, you know, if I get stuck. So, yeah. So I think even for, for them as publishers, I think now they have a new tool to offer yeah, it's like people. A new thing to you know, offer, it's right? like, oh, you know, you could put QR codes in your book. And... <laughs> wow. I have, I have the first book Buy it. People's website instead when you can, I don't know, buy it in people's website instead. I'm not sure what that means, but we have a Kickstarter right now that will really help them get this book to in your hands as soon as possible. I've been posting the link in the chat and the show notes. And Kathy says, are the recipes SOS free? I know they're SO free for sure. And yeah. the other S being salt is either minimal or optional from what well, I have. It's, it's low salt. And <laughs> yeah. we don't use any kind of like Himalayan salt or, or white table salt. If we use a salt salty product, it's going to be like Bragg's liquid aminos or miso uh, Mari. Yeah. Oh. But usually the low sodium, like low sodium soy sauce, low sodium uh, tamari sauce. And well, actually, our our recipes are actually gluten free as well. Um, that's not in the in the whole food plant based world. You don't have to be gluten free. But we had started the show that way and it just kind of continued on because yeah. we've, Jill, Jill has really found amazing ways to make gluten-free stuff that's amazing because a lot of the gluten-free stuff we'd had was terrible yeah, it's, it's like terrible. chalk yeah you know, or the, you know a product that you buy at the store it's something you buy yeah, at the store it's, yeah. it's just terrible so they're actually yeah they're actually gluten-free as well no, I think that opens you up to an even wider market even people that maybe aren't vegan are looking for gluten-free recipes and stuff exactly, exactly. Yeah. or if you know I, we, I've just found that most people that are they try this kind of recipe um, but they also have a lot of allergies. So it's like, they just, to me, they just kind of naturally go together. Yes, yeah, one less. Yeah. And it is difficult to find uh, recipes that are, that are SOS free, gluten-free, you know, all that, all the freeze, you know, yeah. <laughs> they, the freeze. there's usually, you know, whole wheat flour or something like that. And that's what I find anyway. And yeah. I figure, well, you know, they've already got that covered. <laughs> And then the so gluten free in the gluten free world, usually there's a lot of other stuff like sugar and oil, and right. so getting all of that in the same place is is pretty hard to, yeah. to find. Yeah. How did you get Dr. Greger to write the forward? That was amazing. That was our that was one of I those know. moonshot things. Like we we're like, who's going to write the forward of the book? And he was the no, first like, person on the just, list. Let's just write him. I was like, let's note. just write him and let's ask. Try. And he was so gracious and he wrote it like right away. It was like within yeah. a week, it came back and it's such a nice. It is beautiful. I can't nice wait thing. for you all to read it. <laughs> I was still just like, wow, wow. I didn't expect that. So well, that's amazing. It was blessed by Dr. Greger. We just yeah. And we have um, Nelson Campbell because he writes about climate change. Uh, and um, Oh, Robbie and Cyrus. Robbie and they Cyrus. did an article on diabetes and whole food plant-based. We were going to write these things ourselves and we thought, why don't we just get the people that are the, are the expert and see if they want to write, you know, 800 words and we'll put it in the book. And Doug Evans, the sprout guy, I think is going to do a sprout page. Oh, is he? I think, okay. I think. We just, we're so. just reaching out to him. So <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to ask something about sprouting and we're like, let's just get the sprouting guy to write. That's that right. Be, yeah. That's so cool. Elizabeth says, what was the most difficult recipe you've made so far? 
Oh, wow. Swedish wow, meatballs. That's a good, oh, yeah, one I haven't perfected yet. Swedish meatballs. Our community <laughs> asked for that one. Oh, my gosh. It is not my first working. few tries have been horrific. <laughs> yeah. They've been so unedible that we actually had to throw that away because it just was gross. The mushrooms. Uh, let's rough. see. Well, that first few were pretty rough. We had mushroom stroganoff. The final recipe is one yeah, of my so favorites. it's so simple. Well, I was trying to do it. I was trying to do it nut free. Nut free. The first few iterations were really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine a stroganoff being terrible. Being it was terrible. terrible. Yeah. Oh, the hardest. hardest so even the, even the pup wouldn't eat the Swedish meatballs? They were that bad? Oh, you know what? We didn't even try to give it. I didn't try to Yeah, it's got the, all these different spices and stuff and, and tomato paste. They're not supposed to have tomato paste. And, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think burgers. maybe the most, yeah, burgers, Short the black burgers. bean burger to make it firm. And cause I, I, I love plant-based burgers, you know, like black bean burgers and stuff like that, but they tend to be mushy on the inside, which yeah. I, I hate that when you bite in the outside's kind of nice and crispy and you think it's a nice firm burger and you eat it and it just smushes and your buns all smushed and it's globbing out everywhere. So it's been my goal to make a nice firm black bean burger, one that you could even grill on your your grill, uh, you know, outdoor grill. They freeze well. They freeze yeah. well. So that one took me that one took me a long time. I kept trying, and they they tasted great, but they just they were still really mushy on the inside. And yeah, this last time, I think it was using psyllium husk powder. I think was a key oh, thing yeah. to getting it all to bind and be really strong. Yeah. I think bread, yeah. you know, being making gluten free bread that's good is is a challenging. Yeah, and our, challenging. the buckwheat stuff we're making that's now that's not really really heavy. Yeah, yeah, the the cinnamon buckwheat bread and the plain buckwheat bread, the stuff that would come out recently, it, we eat it every day. We have a slice of it every single day. It's so easy to make. Yeah, like it's you just blend it up and stick it in the pan. Easy. It's like it's how like you figure, how do you figure these yeah. things out? just a lot of trial and error. And I read a lot. You know, I I'm on Pinterest all the time. I I just see pictures of things and I'm like I bet I can do that or I just look at the ingredients real quick and I'm like okay I know I think I know how to make that work yeah and I, and I just try it and sometimes it works sometimes it really doesn't <laughs> <laughs> I think you know watching Jill over the years I think that whole food plant-based cooking is is sort of like um like French cooking like there's a set of rules yeah. that once you once you have them they kind of apply to everything yeah. Like when you know the cashews or almonds, you can make a cream sauce or there's things that once you get that, when you're, when you're approaching a new recipe, it's easier. It makes right. it easier. You know, you, it's going to work. Yeah, you don't you even have, have to experiment with it. You just know it's going to work. Yeah. 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 You, yeah we saw that with the, it was like oat flour and then buckwheat flour, the uses of those. And I, I love to experiment. I mean, the, the, I always call it the monotony of daily cooking. I'm not really into that part, but I love the creating part, you know, and trying to figure it out and, and get it to work yeah mm. so that that's the part i really love it, like the science part behind it it just fascinates me that's cool let's see here's a nice comment liana says i i have the dalton's first cookbook on my shelf and it's my top three cookbooks i reach for it nearly every day i've spent the day baking her breads nice. 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 and there's a question how do you guys have such pearly white teeth <laughs> I think it might just be the light in here. <laughs> I've been to the dentist I don't know. I know we haven't been through. Yeah, we have to <laughs> really need to go to the dentist. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. We actually yeah, just, just started using um, uh, Uncle Uncle Henry's yeah. uh, toothpaste and mouthwash. Yeah, it's got and, a clean. Man, stuff that stuff is something else. It is powerful. <laughs> yeah, it is powerful. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't know. I'm having a verse a reaction. He's not having this reaction, but my tongue, I'm losing some of the taste. I'm like, no, 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 I can't lose my taste. This is my job. <laughs> uh, so what kind of tooth? I've never heard of that toothpaste. And oh, it, it, it said it's Ayurvedic and it has like a, there's some essential oils and, and clay and stuff in it. So it's really, really strong. Um, but we, you know, we had been quarantining for, with the pandemic. So we haven't been to the dentist. And we're like, if we don't, you know, aren't taking extra yeah. care of our teeth, we're gonna have a problem. So we've been trying different stuff and we recently found this stuff and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's powerful. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't do anything special. I don't, I don't even adhere to any one toothpaste. It's We kind of try all kinds of different, you know, whatever Whole Foods will sell. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> since you <laughs> love the science, why don't you work on making a whole food plant-based SOS-free toothpaste? toothpaste? Yeah, yeah. that would be, that would be, because yeah, I've already done a deodorant. Our deodorant. And we it use works, our deodorant. It works yeah. really well. Yeah, the toothpaste doesn't seem like it would be that difficult, but it'd be, you know, it's like the pal, I, well, well you could probably still make it that into a paste. Yeah. I've tried the powdered stuff before, but I really can't stand the taste of baking soda toothpaste. And that's usually what the natural powdered toothpaste, okay, that's the yes, main yeah. ingredient usually. So, but yeah, that, that's a good tip. Maybe I'll Okay, and I, and I should, I feel like I should join your community and officially do, ask for that, but that, that would be interesting. <laughs> it's funny because you went from self, uh, you went from with going with a publisher to self-publishing and I'm going the other way. And I find that in, I find it's more stressful with a publisher because like you're on their timeline. Like yeah. when you self-publish, hey, you know, if we, yeah, come not on, today, it's tomorrow. But when you were the publisher, I mean, they put a lot of stress on you because it's like when they ask, you got to like answer them. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, we had we had a good experience. I mean, our our publisher was was fine. It it was a learning experience for sure. Mm -hmm. But we ended up doing on our first book, we did a lot more than an author would normally do. Like we mm -hmm. designed the cover, we designed the inside pages, and there was stuff that you would normally just turn over. And we, we just weren't we took all the photos. Yeah. We took all the photos. Like it was stuff we were already doing. So self-publishing for us kind of makes more sense if we can pull it off, if it, if it works, you know, if we can fund it. But. Well, all, all of those things um, are usually wrapped up in the cost of, you know, what the publisher gets, but we, we started looking at it. And we're like, okay, so we did the editing, we did the photos, we did the, all of these things that there would be a certain category in, in the publisher's um, realm that they would have been taking care of that. And we're like, okay, so they made 85% and we made 15 that still got more cuts out of it from other people. But we did almost all of the work. All they're doing is running it through the print machine and sending it to Amazon. I mean, so we, we do all the marketing. Hmm. And that's, it's something in the publishing industry when we, because we did our first book and then I did a lot of research just to understand, you know, how does this work? And the publishing industry is moving towards only wanting to publish people who have a platform. So it's like, right. hey, we want to publish Chef AJ because she already has an audience. And you're thinking, so well, that saves on the market. If I already have the audience you. and I'm the one writing the content. It's like we, the whole arrangement is backwards and they know right. that the record industry knows that I'm sure the television industry knows it's the, the whole thing is, is sort of backwards for the artist. Right. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I feel bad because I have friends that are older than me that are wonderful cookbook authors and they've been dropped by their publisher just because they don't have big social media following. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's just kind of sad the way it is now. Yeah. And they say, I don't know if you've heard this, but the, a friend of mine was taking a class on, on authoring books and publishing. And she said, now, if you sell 10,000 books, it's it's like the equivalent of selling 100,000 books 20 years ago. Like the publishing industry has changed so much in the amount of books that they expect to sell from an author. So if you're expecting to sell 10 or 15,000 books, you're considered a successful author. Whereas before you wouldn't no, even be a blip in their, on their radar. Um, so that whole dynamic has changed uh, as well as the music industry. It's like People struggle to make money selling music. You have to perform music live in order to make any money with it, because the okay. whole industry is just like sucking all the all the profits, you know, from the from the artists. So nice. Let's see if there's any more questions. Oh, somebody, uh, Tammy just got your first cookbook delivered today. Plant based cooking oh, made nice. easy. Can't wait to dig in. Are there any differences? But obviously, there's all new recipes. But are there other differences between the first book and the second book? There's something that's oh, worth that's... saying. Just we're trying to say this oh. now. The the last print run, they, they've done three print runs of our first <laughs> book. And the last print run, some amount of the books got 30 pages of American barbecue ribs and pork chops inserted in the yeah. middle of our book. So we've been getting you know emails from people and they're like, <sighs> hey, um, there's all these meat recipes in your book. We thought you did were you, plant based. Yeah, did you mean to do this? And we're, we're trying to arrange like, to get the books replaced. All the but... things that it couldn't have been like knitting or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like giant meat pictures and. Uh, uh, other, otherwise, that would be a collector's are... item. That's a collector's <laughs> yeah, item. Yeah. Did you get one of the rare copies that has the meat, meat in plant -based it? Stuff. <laughs> the books are similar uh, in format. Um, like I said, we've got content from 
like like uh, Nelson Campbell from Plant Pure and Dr. Gregor in the forward. We've tried to just anything that's in there. It's like we're trying to add value. It's someone bringing a perspective on something or some part of plant based maybe you didn't know about. Uh, so, you know, tips and things like that. But the, the general format yeah, is it's similar. very similar. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little bit of an introduction. Because it's the, it, a volume two of the series. So yeah. we wanted to keep it very consistent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm some of my books, the pages were upside down. Yeah, oh. I've heard that. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Gosh. And then yeah, it's and funny because you, you, you tell them and the, the industry is like, oh yeah, that happens. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to tell those people? <laughs> Yeah. Well, they, I get the, they get it replaced though. I'm sure when that happens. Yeah, they, yeah. Do. they yeah. do. Oh, but the yeah, the funny thing is that the the one lady from she was from Germany because I think the uh, some of the international crowd had been waiting a long time to get her book. Yeah, because uh, they yeah. you know the market was mostly here first, and uh, so she got one of the copies with the meat in it, and they sent her out a new book. No, she she oh, no. sent it back to Amazon. Oh, okay. She and then Amazon it. sent her a new one, and it was and another. And they had the same. Oh, yeah, she's like, oh, I just got it, and it's got, it's got the same. Uh, so we're trying to let people know if you got one of those, it was not our intention. <laughs> don't don't make the recipes. Just tell us, and we'll we'll yeah, help you get yeah. it replaced. <laughs> that is funny that you'd get the barbecue book. I know. We were joking that maybe someone on the printing line did it on purpose. <laughs> like, like, ooh, I'll get these vegans. Vegans, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be cool if the barbecue book had some of your recipes hey, in it? It probably did. Maybe it did. <laughs> <gasps> there you Those go. Those people accidentally ate vegetables that day. They made the recipe. They were like, the funny thing is, there's no meat in this one. <laughs> <laughs> what is tofu? <laughs> that is so funny. Now, I, you know, I'm not familiar with all the, all the different uh, crowdfunding platforms, but is Kickstarter the one where if you don't make it, they don't give you anything because if it's true, we got to get you everything. Yes. Yeah, they call it all or nothing funding so that you set a goal. We, we actually did a tremendous amount of research to set our goal. Um, and that's it's one of the harder things to do because you have to essentially figure out what everything is going to cost, including yeah. using Kickstarter. You know, they have a fee, credit card processing fees, distributing, all that stuff. And we're doing shipping separately because shipping is so crazy right now. With the yeah. Pandemic, well, so. and it's because our audience is not just the U.S., it's the U.S. and international. Yeah. And there's no way we could figure out every country. Ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kickstarter, uh, uh, I think Kickstarter also is the place, because I did a lot of research on platforms and Kickstarter specifically for things like books. Um, mm -hmm. is where people are going. Indiegogo is, it can be other things, you know, gadgets Indiegogo and whatever, but Kickstarter, the print world, like people making um, games or cards or any, you know, uh, printed artwork, that kind of stuff seems to do really well on Kickstarter. Um, and then other types of projects seem to do better in places like Indiegogo. So for a, for a cookbook, I think Kickstarter is a really good place to Ago. I think that's the one Kathy Fisher used and yes. yeah her campaign yeah. was great yeah but you're right if we don't make it to our goal then the project doesn't yeah. happen it doesn't charge it if we don't make the goal so we'll have to decide if if that were to happen which it's not going to happen yeah we'll if we don't decide so just to be clear if, if we don't reach the goal at the end by the end it's 30 days uh no one is charged the people who pledged aren't charged anything Ooh, and they let you extend it at all ever as an option or not. Not, not in a Kickstarter. So. Yeah, you set your set your turn. You can go again, like you could start over um, and try to do let you know less or but for us, and just so the folks watching this know, the amount of books that we're trying to print are really it's the minimum that's viable. If we print anything less than three thousand books, the cost, the cost per is book is so high that it's not worth it's not worth doing. Well, so. if I think you'll make it, I know you'll make it. And if you don't, we'll have to start a GoFundMe to <laughs> pay for your hospital care because no, I'm kidding. <laughs> out of my eyes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Kathy wants to know how close or how far from your goal are they? If it's a sensitive question, don't ask. I know you guys can look that up because I'm well, going to. We just, yeah, yeah, all, we just started. We just turned it on this morning, so we're we're ten percent funded at this point. I think it was nine. Yeah. Is nine percent last last time we checked? Yeah, here I'll, I'll look actually over top. And then guys, you can only you can you can pledge as little as twenty dollars and get the get the the virtual copy of the book. And for a hard copy, it's thirty five. And then the levels go up if you want more stuff or if you want your picture in the book. But come on, yeah. everybody's got twenty bucks for yeah. for, for a vegan. <laughs> 
like this who gives everything for free. I mean, you know, that's the thing. And I think that's I, one of the reasons I know your book's going to make it just for the same reason Kathy Fisher is, is because she gave all her recipes for free on her blog all those years. And yeah. people yeah. still wanted them all presented yeah. beautifully in a book, you know? Yeah, we want this to be accessible to everyone, Yeah, you know? And so that's, that, I mean, it's it's the idea. I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound callous, but if it doesn't work, it just tells us that that's not what people want right. and that's okay. You know, we're doing this because we, we, the message we're getting is people want this actually in a physical book and having a hardcover, like having it as a nice book. I think honestly, because whole food plant-based recipes, like it, it isn't like a typical book. If you eat this way and you find recipes you love, you plan on using them forever. Yeah, over and over. I like the idea that someone would give these books to their kids. It's like, hey, we're, we're passing these on to you because we raised you plant-based or whatever. So mm. we're trying to make something that would actually last that way. It's not disposable, even though we give them away free on, online. You know, we don't think of them as disposable. I think they're, right. they're valuable, right? You'll make it 10% on the first day. You've got 30. You, come on, let's, let's have them make it sooner so that they don't stress. Cause it is yeah. <laughs> We're okay. I did one of these for, for a friend recently for a wheelchair van and, and we made it, but we, we made it and we didn't make it. We, we, we did uh Indiegogo where we still could keep, we made half 45,000 and then an oh, angel right. investor came along, but it was just so stressful every day checking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i think yeah i think for us it's just you know anticipation because we know that it's going to work but watching you know watching the numbers keep going up it's really exciting just to see the response yeah yeah, yeah. And, and honestly the book that we're trying to make we got a bunch of samples sent to us so we were you know feeling the paper and trying the bindings and what we want to make like what we know that this will be when you hold yeah, it in your hand really nice. is something that we really want to make it's it's yeah. exciting in that way something i would want for myself yeah so you know you that's the, the type of thing you know when i used to the days of going to uh barnes and noble oh, <laughs> yeah, barnes and noble, i miss you yeah I, I would just sit there i'd get my stack of cookbooks and you know I'd, the cookbook section was always so beautiful all the beautiful covers and the Oh, I was just like, oh, someday, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I, this is my it's first time with a publisher. I have a book now in Barnes and Noble, which yes. I got to do a book signing, which is like a whole different ballgame. Oh, cool. But you know where they put my book? They didn't put it in vegan cooking. They didn't put it in vegetarian cooking. My book is in gluten free cooking. Whatever. What? I don't get. I know. I don't get it. But that's where it is. So I, so there's two Kathy, two different Kathy's have questions, but Kathy with a C says, gosh, if somebody's Kickstarter doesn't meet the goal, do they lose the money? You don't lose the money. No, you no, just don't, you don't get the money. You don't get it. It's yeah. just all the work involved. Cause we've, we've spent months and months Probably of work each, each uh, cookbook just to get is a... to, to now. Yeah. Each... And it hasn't even gone to the publisher yet. So each one of these that cookbooks is about, <laughs> it's about a year's worth of work, which is, is hard to imagine. Yeah. Uh, between the writing and all the recipes and like the edit everything, designing the photo photography. And then, you know, we're, where we are with the book itself, we have the manuscript done and edited. All the recipes are done. They're all photographed and, and uh, all the videos are made, which is like a whole other thing. Uh, but there's still the whole, we're going to do all the interior designs. We have a, a rough cover design, but we need to finish that. So there's still actually yeah, a, lot a lot of work to do to just yeah. to finish to, 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 we're going to do that over the next 30 days while it's running. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if if it didn't get that's gonna make it. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of work. That's a lot of work we'll to sell the PDF. Aside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, Kathy says, I would love their cookbook. I think are their recipes complicated or longer or quicker and shorter? It's called plant-based meat made easy. Yeah, that's our kind of our goal. Most of yeah. most of the things take about 15 to 20 minutes to prep and 15 to 20 minutes to cook yeah and it's you know pretty and it's mostly from items that you would already have in your cupboard so i try not to do many exotic ingredients or rare you know weird spices our first book was a little bit more experimental we were trying to include more international types of dishes so there were some spices that might have been unfamiliar to people hmm. um, but this one is really i modeled most of the recipes um, off of familiar recipes, you know, things that people already are eating. And I just made it a healthier version. So it should be, this book should be more familiar. And it's part of the, the goal with our show that we realized uh, over the years of making the show is 
we want our recipes to be things that people can use to transition. The whole point right. of our show is to help people go plant-based and then stay plant-based. So we really focused on things that are bad for you, like all the foods that people love that aren't good for you and making whole food plant-based versions that are good for you so you can just swap them out. And it's like, you know, I think it was Dr. Greger in one of his videos, he said that, that they did a study and most people make maybe five or six recipes at all. That's yeah. their repertoire. So if you're replacing five or six or eight recipes and now you're whole food plant-based, that's not that big of a stretch, right? It's right. like, you just need to find five or six or eight of them that you like. So right. that's what Jill, I think has really done an amazing job is just taking things that are familiar. And we're trying to do that from other cultures as well. Like she's working on right. an Afghan dish right now. A friend oh, of ours is Afghan. He's so like, please good. do Afghan food. It turned out so good. It's so good. We're oh, like, it's, it's ready. It's so simple. <laughs> it's, the, it's ridiculously simple, but it has so much flavor. Oh, I just, so I, still can't, I still can't believe that that came out like that. And that was our community <laughs> wanted eggplant egg dishes. Plant. And our friend who's going plant-based wanted Afghan dishes. And it's an Afghan eggplant dish. So we yeah. got, oh, it's so got good. everything in there. Yeah. So good. <laughs> That's terrific. So we have uh, Kathy with a K says, you may have mentioned this, does the hardback book flay, lay flat so it always stays open? It's easy to see the recipes. Yep. Yep. Yes, you don't need a cookbook holder. I hate those things. I hate having that extra thing on my counter. And we're trying to do, <laughs> I was a, a user experience designer in a previous lifetime, and we're trying to make things like using bold, uh, clear fonts so that you can read the book if it is on the counter. You don't have to pick it up. And, you know, right. a lot of cookbooks for some reason yeah, use really tiny, faint. tiny fonts so that they look fancy. And we're like, make it clear, make it readable so that you can read it when it's laying on the counter. So there's little things like that that we're trying to yeah. take into account to, to make it nice to use, including laying flat. Yeah. Nice. And somebody just pledged, Karen Gaylor. I should be, I should be there every time somebody pledges. And I found that the recipes from their videos are fairly simple from ingredients I already have or are easy to obtain. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Nice. Well, you're going to make it, you know, maybe it'll be suspenseful and you might not make it tomorrow. <laughs> I, I don't think. I know you. I, there's just, I just, you're, you're very well loved in the plant-based community. It's only been like a few hours and you're already 10% there. And as soon as I get done, I'm going to get, I'm going to pledge at the $110 level. How do you, how do you pledge Elizabeth? You just click this link that I've been posting the whole show. And then you pick a level anywhere from $20 to uh, 110 or higher you can give more right. if you want you know you don't have to be oh lisa you know, pledged from australia how nice oh, oh thank you on nice. that on that point we, we've been watching the pledge thing in the background in kickstarter and people are pledging more like you can pick a level and yeah, then you can add to it so people amazing. have been so amazing they're just like yeah i threw extra 50 dollars on here like we want to see this happen and, well nice so then you will yeah. get it or and, you, and also know you can get more than one book Right. Yeah, you can add books to any tier except the digital one, because the digital one obviously is just digital, but you can add more books and it's just the cost per book to, to add them. So you, if you want to give some as gifts or whatever you can. Mm. Yeah. That's great. We'll print more, as they say. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, uh, at, at best of luck. I know you're going to achieve it. I just can't wait to get the book in my hands, because like I said, if I, I mean... Your book is the best for people that are new to veganism, in my opinion. It's it, mm -hmm. and your show because these are the and, and also for people that are SOS free because before your book there were really no books like your book. So that's true. Awesome. That's true. Yeah. There were very few. I think Chef yeah. was it Chef Bravo or the one, the cookbook Bravo? Yeah, was there was called? one from True, uh, True North, uh, Chef Bravo. Yeah, I think that was SOS. Yeah, his is SOS free. Yeah, Kathy, yeah. Kathy, and me are SOS free. But your your recipes are like really, like you say, really familiar, and it's very good for people that are like brand new to veganism because right. it's right. it's not all weird. Like yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I test them out on my family from Nebraska, and I mean that's a good <laughs> test because Midwestern folks, you know, corn and you know they're in the land of corn and beans where you eat meat and potatoes. <laughs> you should actually put that these recipes were tested on nebraska, and my, nebraska. They, they haven't complained about any of them my dad is still very skeptical about tofu but last time i went there wink wink there were a couple dishes that had lots of tofu and he didn't know and no one told <laughs> him it. and he loved it <laughs> okay so kathy says so when you make your goal how long before they're printed and sent out uh six, six months is what the the publisher is estimating um, and they, they told me to say, when we say that, that that is an estimate, 
but it's it's because the entire publishing industry is facing supply chain issues. Right. There's a massive like global paper shortage. There's so many issues right now in manufacturing that everybody is is on yeah. very loose estimates. But okay. well, the interesting thing is a traditional publisher, the same timeline, like from turning in a manuscript, it would actually be 18 months. So doing this in six months so is significantly time. faster. Um, the the whole industry is is backlogged big time. So this is one way to actually get there get there quicker. Right. Well, I have a nice comment from Leanna. Back in October, I signed up for Jill's twenty eight day beginner course and haven't looked back. Thank you for helping me take the. Oh, oh yeah. did you say Leanna? Leanna. It, well, Lee and then Anna. L E E A N N A H. Hi, Anna. I think I think this is the same same girl. She she comments on almost. I think she tries every single recipe. Um, her, her, her moniker is Leanna's Creations. Yes, that's oh, her. Yeah, yeah. See yep. her. Hi, Leanna. Uh -huh. Oh, here's an interesting question from Brooke. Do you get the digital copy right away? Oh. Yeah, we have to decide what to do with that because some folks aren't getting it. So it's like we want everybody to get it at the same time. That's a good question. That is a we got to we have to decide that. I mean, they probably should, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. That, that probably makes sense. Yeah, yeah. well, it could, could generate more excitement maybe for people to tell other people. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That could be. Yeah. And we yeah, want, we're, in the don't... digital bundle, you get our first book too. And we want people to get that right away too. So mm -hmm. yeah, that makes a good question. Yeah. yeah, well, my audience is very good. And <laughs> uh, uh, Amy says, do you follow Melissa Sherlock? She's also from Nebraska. She was on the show this week, did a great Melissa cooking Melissa Sherlock. No, I yeah. haven't even heard yeah, she of was, I'll have to look her up. She was great. Yay, Nebraskans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did, you <laughs> did you see that movie called Nebraska? Yes. Like, yeah, that was I, good. I, it was good. Yeah. Was really good. My actually, uh, my two cousins were extras in that movie. Because they're from Nebraska, of course. That's cool. Amy says, I can't wait to try the taco pizza from this past weekend. Yes, oh my so God, good. Yeah. I love taco pizza. Yeah, I saw that picture. <laughs> that. that was good. Well, guys, I want to keep this under an hour so that I can post this yep. video on Instagram and get more people to see it so more people can pledge. Thank you Wonderful. so much for Oh my God, it's my pleasure. You guys do great work. I'm so, I'm so excited for you. And I know, come on, everybody, at least 20 bucks you right now. Do it. Do it. We can do it. We can. Remember that show, Adam Sam? No. We can do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, take care and come on anytime. Test out a recipe on my audience. They love you. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, AJ. Thank right. Thanks. Thanks, Jeffrey and Jill. And thank thanks you, all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in five when my guest is Dr. Vera Tarman talking about 